Good day. It's so great to have you here. We are on location in front of our our mission house um, where Jenny and her crew have been staying from Wisconsin and just really grateful. Um, I know we don't have an opportunity often to talk to our volunteers at length, but um, for me, Jenny has been such a bright spot and her pooch, Biloxi, that we'll introduce. And my dog, Jackson, will probably uh, bomb the film periodically here. Um, Jackson, come over here so folks can see you. Jackson, yo, come here. So there's, well, you, yeah, there he fun. comes. He's good, good. good. So um, I have a sweet spot in my heart um, for Wisconsin. Um, for the for the for the land of cheese huts um, and Green Bay, right? Packers, go Packers! Um, and I lived probably what maybe a half an hour south of Plymouth. There's yeah, Grafton Cedarburg. Yep. So I lived in Grafton Cedarburg for five years. Worked in Milwaukee. That's where I was running a shelter for homeless runaway, throwaway youth, and a street outreach program. And actually, one of the big reasons I think uh, Wisconsin holds such a a big place in my heart and my life is that's where I became a UCC pastor. It's where I had my ordination recognized by the United Church of Christ, the Wisconsin oh. Conference. So I lived in Stevens Point, Madison, Milwaukee, and Grafton, Cedarburg, and uh, just spent the majority, I guess, of my chosen adult work life um, <laughs> in Wisconsin. And and Jenny has a beautiful story, um, and I'll let her explain that to you. But um, how many times have you been down here, Jenny, as a, a work volunteer? Yeah, so we were talking about this. Our church started coming down seven years ago. Okay. Um, it was a group of five of us that decided that, yep, let's go ahead and do this. And, of course, we are coming down here. And we've done volunteer work. We've worked in soup kitchens. Um, but we come from a rural community where, you know, everybody is housed and, you know, seems to have what they need. And we were not prepared mentally mm -hmm. it's the emotional part it's the relationship parts um, it's coming down you get to see um, you get to see these people and realize that could be anyone in your life that you, yeah. you kind of place them and you know that wow that could have been my mom that could have been my sister um, so we've been coming down um, seven years one year I think we came down twice um, but it is something that forever we will it, you know we come down we bring we try to bring, um, we brought youth. This is the second time we've been able to say, you know what, we're coming down in the summer. We usually try to come January and February from Wisconsin, if you can imagine that. We get a break <laughs> from the frozen tundra of yeah. minus 10 and 20. Yep. Um, so the only time we've come down when it's balmy hot like this is basically <laughs> when we have to with our youth. But I do think it's been, um, I think it's been a good thing for us because oh by choice we'll come down in january and february but realistically like this is when it is horrible and it it is it's another layer of wow yeah to think you know like yeah. it's hot enough in january and february but yet you come down now and you realize oh yeah they're going to take a break from the mission for the month of august because it's so hot and the workers don't want to be out in the heat and it's but they live in the heat right you know and and best guesstimates tell us there's probably two to three hundred people any given night living on the streets right here along the coast. And it, it gets up to, you know, 80, 85, 90 degrees. Um, you know, the humidity is pretty high. I'm happy to have humidity again after living in, in Phoenix for seven years. But um, it definitely gets warm and uncomfortable, especially living in the woods, right? Yeah. Um, or even on the beach, wherever you're at. So we, we have kind of an exciting story, I think, here. And Je Jenny, what's the name of your church back in Plymouth? So my home church in Plymouth is um, Salem United Church of Christ, Plymouth. Um, okay. we're, uh, we always say we're a small congregation because we have a lot of Lutheran churches. But in terms of congregation size, we probably have uh, maybe 150 active church members, I like to call it, or those that come and actually sit in the pews right. and, and are actively involved. And, I think we're closer to three to 350. We're an older congregation, like a lot of churches. Um, we have a great um, youth minister, so that has brought a lot of excitement in. And she's one that uh, Marsha came with. Like she had, Marsha and I are the only two, I think, from our church that have made it every trip that we've come wow. down. Um, but that, you know, you don't have to have a large congregation to, right. to be able to do a lot of good right. things. And kind of what, what Jenny and her group are doing, and Marsha, in and the youth they brought along is they're volunteering in the Micah Day Center, volunteering in our food pantry, 
Um, and then we have two homes, kind of in what we call our Duckworth homes, yeah. that were meant to be sold um, for individuals that are low income right now because of the pandemic, and we didn't have a lot of volunteers down. It's a bit of a different model, but it's, it's homes that they actually helped work on in the beginning, yeah. um, a year ago, a year and a half ago, right? Yeah. And we're now they're open. back down and kind of doing all the finish work. So that's a that's a beautiful thing. And they're in kind of North Gulfport, which is um, really the second largest city in um, in Mississippi, Jackson, and then Gulfport. So yeah. So I think the really the the kind of for me the human interest story and why this little puppy is here. Um, and and I'll let I'll let Jenny share that. But there were two unsheltered puppies, right? Homeless puppies yes. um, that were found. Um, of course, we found out. One was six months old. Yeah, about the same size, just a little bigger. Yep. They're going to be big puppies, but and they're... We, and originally thought they were brothers and sister, right? Yeah. But they ended up not being because um, the Luxie here is, is three months old. Yeah. So you want to share a little story about that? I Jenny? will, actually. Um, I have a soft spot for animals. I do for people as well, but... Because um, she is a sheep farm. Yeah, I was going to say, I actually live on a 20-acre sheep farm with my family. Um, we also have outdoor kitties, we have chickens, we have indoor kitties. We also have a dog that is a rescue from the south. Um, and um, basically, we see homeless pets all the time when we come down here. And my group is always like reeling me in. My mom usually comes, actually. My mom is a retired school teacher and she, this is the first, second trip she hasn't been able to come on. But somebody is always reeling me in, Jenny, Jenny, you know, you can't, you can't save everything. I know that, but I still want to sure. be empathetic <laughs> and like, oh, I want to pet him at least. And so this particular time I went over to the Micah Day Center and oh, we saw the two puppies out on the porch and it's not uncommon to see the, the homeless population have pets. And I can understand that if I were homeless and I had a pet, it would be a happy thing. And um, so I just thought that was somebody with their, their pet and that, that that's the life that that puppy is going to live. And I'm going to be okay with that because I know what they're providing for that other human being. And um, as I was walking up to go and just see, like, oh, the owner out there, I was like, oh, look at the puppies. And this gentleman stands up and says, they need a good home. They, they really, they need a good home. And it, it caught me off guard because I'm first line that I always get when I am referring to a puppy isn't, oh, my God, they need a home. It's they need to be together and I can appreciate that and here and I was like oh I said are those yours he's like no no they were in the woods and proceeds to basically he's you know so after talking with this gentleman um they come out of the woods they and he thought maybe he wanted to keep one and he wanted to keep the bigger one and I said let me see what I can do we'll see about getting him some dewormer you know, they had pet food in the in the micro center that they could share. He already had water for them. Um, and I said, I'm going to see what I can do. Uh, the full circle here is my friend Julie, who our second, our third visit down, I met Julie. And Julie is somebody that was near and dear to me because I saw my mother. We went and helped her with her home, which is just a couple of blocks here. And... Julie was a retired school teacher, and she it was my mother to me. For all intents and purposes, <coughs> when I saw Julie, I saw my mom. And the story here is Julie adopts the neighborhood strays and has them spayed and neutered. And I just thought, see, this is something I can hang my hat or my mind at rest with. There are loving people that are doing the right things for these animals, right, and the people. And so that gave me insight into when you see the cats in the neighborhood, you know what, somebody <coughs> might still be loving and caring for them. Or, yeah. And so with Julie, every year I come down now with money from my kids, my two children raise money, lemonade stands or whatever it may be, their allowances, and I always bring an envelope of money to give to Julie, who has that she helps with pet things. And so I was over in the Micah Day Center hearing these puppies are needing help and I'm like Julie I actually have a local connection from somebody that we helped and is now on her feet volunteers here I'm gonna check with her and see so it was like a it was a pet project you know like this was not on our itinerary for this trip you know like I you know wasn't planning on bringing a puppy back 
But what we ended up, the, the end of the story is the gentleman, by the time I got back with the dewormer, decided that he couldn't take care of himself and he wanted better for the puppy. Um, so the other puppy has actually been adopted out by somebody here that thought she was adopting it for her mother and is now keeping it for herself because she realized she needed that in her life. Yeah, Lorraine, who is staff here, she's adopted the puppy. Yeah, and so little Biloxi here, the same thing is I don't need another dog. I have a very busy life. I just started a business. Um, I volunteer with church. Um, I, you know, have a farm with animals that need to be cared for. And training a puppy is a lot of work. It's a commitment and hopefully they live for many, many years. So it's not something you just say, oh, there's a homeless puppy. I think I'm gonna throw it in a bag and take it home. So I called my mom and brother and said, hey, this is my situation. Can I bring the dog? I mean, if, you know, can we work this out and figure out? And um, so in the heat of the moment, I had a yes, yes, and yes. We had multiple options. Um, and so I knew he was coming home, called the airline. They're gonna, I get to put him in a little carrier under the seat. It's $95 to, to let him fly. We had a local vet that literally, it was funny, we came down to get onto Division Street and I was like, where's the, the there was a little vet place here, like the things you remember when you come and yeah. you're like, oh, there, there were houses missing because they're clearing to get the the road wider. Oh wait, no, there's the vet. There it is on that side. Before we knew we were doing the puppy thing. And then the puppy thing happened and um, we were able to call that vet right here down the road and she got them in the very same day. Um, so both dogs have already... They gave you a discount. Yeah. Like waived her office fee um, and we, yeah, it was, I, I once again, it's just another one of those, see, there's somebody yep. caring. There's, it, you can't do any of this alone. It's all about the community and the relationships, you yep. know, and it's, now there's a forever relationship with that vet that's been down the road for how long, yep. you know, that it's, so yeah, the, the, the relationships just never stop coming. Every time I come down here, I get another layer of, mm. you know, people, people care. People, and people know. are good down here in Mississippi. They I think are. you find that with a vet that's volunteering to say I'm going to waive my fee because you're doing something good. Yeah. And and what we've noticed with Biloxi, um, because Biloxi's been here now with us for a couple, three days, right? <laughs> that um, Biloxi, tail between the legs, kind of scared, really didn't move much, didn't act like a puppy, right? Yeah. When Biloxi first came. But Biloxi's very much like a puppy now. You can see that love, <laughs> right? right? That love and that care and that compassion really changes things. And in a way, it's the same with the individuals we work with here, our guests, right? Our unsheltered population is, we, we attempt to love them because we know love makes a difference. Yes. Um, and makes a difference in how we live and if we survive and if we do more than survive, we thrive. And so I just think it's a beautiful testimony of, of the power of love. And also that, you know, Jenny gets to go back with her crew. They get to take something from Biloxi, literally Biloxi. But, you know, it's it was an unsheltered pup, and so we'll always remind them of the unsheltered people here to keep them in your thoughts and your yes. prayers and your concerns. So it's kind of like a full circle, right? And we really, really love and appreciate individuals like Jenny, but especially Jenny because she's quite funny, uh, <laughs> and I think you know um, has a real genuine, genuine heart and love for animals, but a genuine heart and love for people. And so come down, join us, be a part of. A part of our mission um, and a part of our way to change the world here on the coast that's kind of what it's all about right loving people caring for people and and really being the hands and feet of jesus in the world so thank you so much jenny and thank you so much biloxi for your presence among us and for reminding us that we're called to care for all of creation and thanks jackson for being in the background yeah okay? he's like i'm in the corner yeah and kevin for your presence here um, each and every week as you share these videos so um, support us in whatever ways you can, but especially support us with your thoughts and prayers. Come on down, support us that way, or support us with your, with your dollars too. So thank you.